Hello and season's greetings! I am here with a pre-Christmas pickup video as my gift to you. Just kidding, I am just going to be showing off some cool stuff I found at thrift stores and got from other retailers via their various holiday sales. So let's dive right in. Uh, first off, I have a stack here of some movies. So, uh, first off, I grabbed the original Black Panther on Blu-ray for, I believe, under $3. Um, I, of course, I've seen this movie before, absolutely loved it, just didn't own a copy yet, so that was a no-brainer price. And at the same store, I found a copy of Immortals. Uh, this is the 3D Blu-ray combo pack. I have not seen this movie, but I love 3D stuff, and I still have... I have the, I believe it was the Sony 3D display they released back in the PS3 era, as well as the PlayStation VR. Unfortunately, my bigger 3D TV died during the pandemic, but still got a couple ways to enjoy 3D content. <laughs> and then I uh, got a few, oh, actually, one more Blu-ray here. Uh, I picked up Men in Black 2 at a Salvation Army. Now, this was tagged just $1.99, but white tags were half off, so a whopping $0.99. Cents. I think I have Men in Black 3, the 3D Blu-ray, and then I have the whatever the latest one was that I still haven't watched yet, but I didn't have one or two, so now I just gotta find the first one. And then here's a couple DVDs. So this, I didn't even realize existed. It is the best of Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventures, the animated series, uh, volume 1, and this is sealed, and it was tagged $2.99, but yellow tags were half off, plus I got another 20% off, so this was dirt cheap. Then got a couple, uh, actually one more, just kind of random movie here. An older, I believe this was from the 90s, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I'm not seeing it. Oh, 1994. Okay, so I remember seeing this as a kid. It's called Cops and Robbersons. Uh, starring Chevy Chase and Jack Jack Pel Pelance? Pelance? And uh, it's basically just a comedy movie where uh, some cops are doing a stakeout at a family's home, and it's it's pretty good. But anyway, I, I recall seeing the laser disc of this movie at a store a few months ago, and I was like, oh, I remember that. But uh, I looked it up, and apparently it was only released on VHS and DVD in addition to the laser disc, and I finally found the DVD. Uh, again, just one ninety nine. Then got a couple of Christmas movies. So this one is called The Magic Gift of the Snowman. I thought I remembered this from when I was a kid, but we watched it and it was pretty terrible. <laughs> so that was kind of a miss. But I uh, got this one, which is just called A Collection of Christmas Classics. And again, this was from the store I got Men in Black. So it was a white tag, half off, 99 cents. And it... We didn't watch this one yet, but it has a few things I definitely recall seeing. Um, the animated version of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, not the Rankin-Bass stop-motion one. Uh, as well as a few other animated stories like Santa and the Three Bears, The Snow Queen, The Christmas Burrow. Uh, apparently it has over four hours <laughs> of holiday favorites, so might throw that on tomorrow. Then here is a film from the 90s, I vaguely remember, called All I Want for Christmas. And this was sealed, $2.99 at Sabres, but uh, I think I got 20% off. And according to the synopsis here, it's about a pair of children who are trying to get their, their divorced parents back for Christmas. And they, I think they, like, kidnap Santa Claus. It looked cute. And finally, one uh, for anyone who else grew up in the Chicagoland area and watched WGN. I'm sure you've heard of these, if not seen them multiple times. It is the classic holiday trilogy, which includes Hard Rock, Coco, and Joe, The Three Little Dwarfs, Susie Snowflake, as well as Frosty the Snowman. Uh, so these were some very, very old animated shorts that were featured on a lot of children's programming here in the Chicagoland area. So happy to actually own a copy of this. Again, from Sabres, just a couple bucks. And then, um, before I get to the video games, here's a couple interesting CDs I found. So first we have Elvin and the Chipmunks, Here's Looking at Me, 
35 years of chipmunk classics. So it features a lot of music from the very early days of the chipmunks to, I, I shouldn't say modern because it was the 90s, but kind of the chipmunk area era I grew up in. And uh, has lots of classic songs. Uh, of course, We're the Chipmunks, the, uh, the theme song from the 90s show, Witch Doctor, uh, Wooly Bully, just lots of good stuff. I love the chipmunks, so I had to get that. Um, on a similar note, I found the soundtrack to an extremely goofy movie, uh, extremely goofy movie, Dance Party. So this has, um, a goofy movie is one of my all-time top three favorite Disney films ever. And the sequel, it's good, it's nowhere near as good, but I still enjoy it for what it is. And this soundtrack has a bunch of disco music, which I love, so I had to grab that. And then this, I'm fairly certain, is some sort of bootleg or, like, custom-made thing, but it is the soundtrack to National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, one of my all-time favorite Christmas films. And uh, it has all of the music that was featured in the movie, as well as a couple other, um, like, cover versions and the song Holiday Road, which is, in, which is featured in the other National Lampoon Vacation films. And finally, one more CD here. This I thought was really interesting. It's called The Home Video Album. And this features a lot of the kind of like opening sound uh, sound effects or like theme songs from various films and TV shows. So for example, it has like the Fox fanfare. So when they're doing the 20th Century Fox opening, I'm sure you've seen that before. Uh, there's also, let's see, some music from westerns, from sci-fi films, and even some music from, like, silent films. So I thought this was really cool for, I think it was, like, two bucks. Okay, moving on, uh, let's look at some actual video games. Um, I got a couple games this month, but they're very eclectic, <laughs> let me put it that way. So first of all, we have Dance on Broadway for Nintendo Wii. Um, so I don't really play these myself, but my fiance, uh, was a fan of the Just Dance series back in the day, so I actually, just kind of for fun, I collected every single game in that series that was released on Nintendo Wii. I, I haven't gotten any of the more modern ones, but, uh, got all of those, and then there were a handful of spin-offs, including this one, which is also from Ubisoft. Uh, and it was an orange tag, $2.99, it was half off, plus another 20% off, and it's like brand new condition essentially, so I figured why not add it to the collection. And then uh, something a little more my speed, I got LEGO Marvel Super Heroes for Wii U, and uh, I previously, I think I played this on PS4, I want to say it was a launch game for PS4. Uh, yeah, it was, actually, and I, I recall playing it at launch and, like, being amazed that you could float in the air as Iron Man. But um, I do like collecting for Wii U. You could see most of my collection behind me here, and this was one I did not have, and I think it was only, like, three bucks, so not bad. And finally, one game that... It's funny, I actually saw this at the store I bought it at well over a month ago, and then they announced the sequel at the Game Awards earlier this month, and I was like, shoot, I really should have bought that. It was still there. World of Goo. Um, I'm sure a lot of you have heard of this or probably played it. It was a really, really popular indie game. Gosh, probably about a, over a decade ago. 2008. Uh, so this was released, I believe, for the original Nintendo Wii as well as PC. But there was never a physical version for Wii or any other console, to my knowledge. So I figured get the physical copy for PC. Uh, it's got kind of a cool fold-out box. And it is complete. It has the manual and everything. And it was only three bucks. So very stoked that it was still there. Um, and then, speaking of PC games, I went to another Goodwill recently, and someone must have dumped their entire collection, because there was in t an entire shelf, I'd say at least 50 or 60 PC games, and some good stuff, too. Uh, I actually, at one point, I loaded up my cart with almost all of them, but I went through and I realized some of them I already had, and they, they were all priced $2.99. 
So there were some that, you know, were maybe worth like five and they were in kind of rough conditions. I was like, eh, do I really need these? But anyway, I pared it down to, I think, just eight games here and uh, got a couple, I wouldn't call all of them good, but definitely interesting titles. So first of all, we have a video or a computer game of The Page Master, which I didn't even realize existed. So uh, this, of course, was the the film featuring Macaulay Culkin from back in the '90s, and uh, from what I was what I read, this is like a full featured adventure game based on the the movie. So thought that was cool. Then this is one I've actually I previously owned this, but ended up selling it at one point. Uh, it's called I'm not sure how to pronounce his name G Gahan. It's G A H A N. Gahan Wilson's The Ultimate Haunted House. Now, this is a very old uh, Microsoft game that was released for, I want to say this is probably 1994, so even before Windows 95. But it's just one of those classic computer games that a lot of us probably played as children, and, you know, when you see it, you're like, oh, yeah! But, yeah, I was happy to find another copy of this, and I will be keeping that one. <laughs> Uh, and then, speaking of classic games, I found Jazz Jackrabbit 2 Holiday Hair. So this is, of course, a Christmas-themed version of the classic side-scrolling platformer. Um, really stoked to find this. And again, all of these are basically, you know, really good condition. Next up, uh, we have Load Runner: The Legend Returns. Now, this actually, at first glance, I thought this was like a CDI game based on the kind of interesting case here, but it is for PC. Um, just looked pretty cool. Um, I, I've played some of the Load Runner games before, but not this one, so figured I'd check it out. Then next up, we have another licensed game based on a somewhat obscure 90s film called Once Upon a Forest. Again, no no clue that a game was made for it, but um, it says, again, it's just like a animated adventure game here. So, excited to check that out. Uh, next is one that I have actually heard of and had been looking for called Stay Tuned. Uh, now, this is a game that parodies a lot of different uh, kind of cartoons from, like, the 90s and 80s. And I think this one's actually worth a little bit of money, so I was pretty excited to get it for just three bucks. Next up uh, is Who Shot Johnny Rock, which is actually a light gun game. Um, I'm not sure exactly sure how the PC version works. I, I would assume you could probably just do, like, a mouse, you know, controlling, like, a little... Um, reticule or something, but haven't had a chance to try it yet, but definitely heard of this one. And then finally is uh, this one is just the disc, but it's called X-Men The Ravages of Apocalypse and this is actually a total conversion for the original Quake. So it's essentially just like kind of like a reskin that replaces all of the Quake you know, characters and backgrounds with stuff from X-Men. So that sounded really cool to me. Again, just three bucks. Okay, uh, that is about it for games and such, but let's keep going with some cool toys. Um, starting over here, this might have been peeking in from off camera, I found this really cool elephant, which, you know, seems like a random thing to buy, but this is by a company called... Where does it say? Uh, Chap May, who makes a lot of, like, really cool, super detailed toys for... Uh, I know they did a lot of stuff for Toys R Us back in the day, which sadly doesn't exist in the U.S. anymore. Um, but they did a lot of kind of cool original toy lines where they'd have, you know, like, people riding dinosaurs or, like, cool cyborg stuff. But anyway, I just thought this elephant was really neat because it scales well with some of my other figures and toys. And it actually has an electronic feature. Let me show you here. Kind of cool. And it was only two bucks. All right, next up, let's see. Uh, right here. So I've got this pretty cool Spider-Man 3D wall art. Um, I, I don't have batteries in it, unfortunately, but his eyes do light up. And again, this was just $1.99. These, uh, I actually looked this up, and they're, they're pretty pricey. So it was happy to get that for just two bucks. 
Next up, uh, <laughs> this is pretty funny. There was a toy line back in the, uh, I think it was the 90s, early 2000s, called Silly Slammers. They were basically beanbag toys with a little speaker inside, and when you slam it on your hand, they would talk or sing or just play a sound effect. Uh, unfortunately, the battery's dead in this one, but this is actually Ken Griffey Jr. <laughs> um, now, I, I'm by no means a baseball fan in any sense of the word, but I kind of consider him a Nintendo character because he did have four... Actually, I think closer to six games, because there were two on Super Nintendo, two on N64, and then I want to say two on Game Boy Color as well. So he's been in on a lot more games than some other Nintendo characters. Uh, so I just thought that was a fun addition to the Nintendo collection. Next up, right here, I found... Hopefully you could see it. This is a set of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle masks. Uh, it was just 99 cents, and from what I was able to find, it looks like this was originally atta attached to a Ninja Turtle backpack. Um, obviously, you know, marketed towards children, but I grew up with turtles, and uh, it'd be cool to have masks. So, got that. Then, um, right here in front of me, you probably saw, I have this really cool Homer Simpson thing. And this is actually one of the very few Simpsons kind of games or board games that I didn't already have. And this is called What Would Homer Do uh, by Tiger Electronics. So it's actually like an interactive card game here. So I, I don't have batteries in them at the moment, but basically you turn it on and then each card has a little code that you type in using the uh, the various character buttons here, and then um, you select the correct answer using either the Duff beer can, donut, or sandwich. <laughs> and then it all talks, it has all the character voices. It's just really fun. And it was only $3.99. So I've actually seen this once before with the box and everything, but I think they were charging close to like $30 for it, which, you know, for something like this at a thrift store I thought was a little extreme, but happy to finally own it for under five bucks. Uh, next up, let's check out a couple toy bags. Uh, I picked up a few this month at various stores. Let me see. Let me start with the Goodwill ones here. Uh, so I got this large bag for just $1.99, but this had some really good stuff in it. Uh, there's a few just kind of random Happy Meal toys, nothing of note, but I found this pretty cool, uh, I couldn't tell you the character's name, but he's from Fortnite. Uh, it's like this robot llama head guy, just kind of a cool detailed figure. Um, let's see, and then this I thought was kind of neat, it's just like some generic cyberpunk ninja guy on this cool little motorcycle, but it's got this cool little cloth cloak, and I don't know, I thought that was kind of cool. And then definitely the best thing in here, the Eevee Funko Pop. <laughs> it's in pretty good shape, too. It doesn't have any, like, major scuffs or scratches or anything. I, I don't know. I mean, that thing alone would be probably ten bucks new, so happy to get it with all this other stuff for under two bucks. Uh, next up, okay, here's another Goodwill bag. This one was $2.99. Not as much in here, but it's mostly good stuff. So here, uh, we have the, this is actually the original Jurassic Park, The Lost World, um, I don't know if it's pronounced Chasmosaurus, or I, I would assume Chasmosaurus, <laughs> um, dinosaur figure. And I think the batteries, yeah, they, they might have finally died, but it does have like an E, like, oh, you can kind of hear it. Yeah, it's just really quiet. <laughs> but yeah, that was cool. That was one I didn't get as a kid. Uh, and then here, we have a little figure from uh, Naruto. Um, gosh, what's his name? Gara, I think? The uh, the sand guy? So it's a pretty pretty detailed figure. I think it's, I would assume, a Gashapon. You know, one of the little capsule toys. But very cool. Uh, there's a cool little witch finger puppet. And a couple Mario Karts. Or, this is a Mario Kart Hot Wheel, and this is just like a weird Mario <laughs> car Hot Wheel. 
And then there's a couple of these, I forget what they're called, they're like mini brands or something. So it's like a little teeny tiny Power Rangers figure, there's like a little My Little Pony. This I thought was especially cool, the uh, Exploding Kittens game, because uh, we do play that. So <laughs> Some neat stuff for not a lot of money. That was, uh, next, uh, this I was really stoked to find. It's a whole bag full of California raisins for just three bucks. And I think, I, I do have a couple of these on my desk already, but I think the only one I already had was the guy with the boom box. So all these other ones are new to my collection. Uh, next. Okay, here is another Goodwill bag. This one had some pretty neat stuff. So, first of all, there are these, they're called Jetsons Space Cards from Denny's, <laughs> the diner restaurant. And they're essentially just round cards featuring, like, space-themed stuff. So these are all different spacecraft. And one in each of these is lenticular, which I love lenticular stuff. So there were three of those. Um, there is a little baboon. <laughs> Uh, Blue, the Velociraptor from Jurassic World. A very interesting looking little generic monster from probably the 80s or 70s. Um, there's randomly a Frank Thomas baseball card in a top loader. I don't know. Um, and then I'm not going to pull out all of them, but there are quite a few of these little Disney figures that are called Durables. Um, now, we've we bought a handful of these through blind boxes, and I just thought it was cool to get a bunch all at once. But definitely the coolest thing in this bag is this. It is a set of Burger King Pogs! So, it has a couple of the Burger King Kids Club members, a dinosaur, and then some Z-Bots, the, the old robot toy line from Galoob, the makers of Micro Machines. Plus, there's an actual Z-Bot figure. So, I, I must have missed this kid's meal when I was a kid, but this is, like, right up my alley. <laughs> so, very cool stuff. Alright, let me get these out the way, and we will continue. Okay, uh, one more very, very cool Goodwill find. Six of the Animal Crossing flocked minifigures for four bucks. I'm pretty sure that GameStop was selling these for an individual figure for $9.99. And I got six of them for four bucks. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, now, two of them are duplicates. There's two of, um, oh gosh, what's his name? The, uh, the younger beaver character. And then two of uh, this wolf character. I, I can't think of their names off the top of my head. But, I mean, even four different characters for, like, a buck each is awesome. And then, um, let's see. Next, here is a bag of stuff from a Salvation Army. That was three bucks. But a couple cool things. There's, um, it's missing his head, but a Marvel Legends figure. <laughs> Figured this could be cool to, you know, use for, like, a custom down the road or something. Got a Jango Fett figure from Star Wars. Um, Luigi and Princess Peach from Mario, of course. A little bitty trash panda or raccoon. <laughs> Bumpy the Ankylosaurus from uh, Jurassic World Camp Cretaceous. It's a very cool figure. And lots of just random stuff, but some mini food items I thought were especially cool. There's a box of White Castle fries, <laughs> and a Sonic foot-long chili dog. thought these could be cool to, you know, pose with some of my action figures or something. And again, the whole bag is just three bucks. Let me move these aside, and there's just one more toy bag. Finally, uh, a small toy bag here, $2.49 from Sabres, plus another 20% off. So first, we got a speeder bike! which I am a huge fan of. Now this, I think, is for one of the uh, the younger 
uh, younger child toy lines. I want to say it's Galactic Heroes. Um, so they're kind of like the little stocky figures with like big arms and hands and weapons and stuff. But hey, I'll take it. Speeder bike. <laughs> and then there were a pair of Ninja Turtle figures from the uh, 2012 series. So we have the Fugitoid as well as uh, one of the original characters from that lot from that show monkey brains <laughs> so pretty cool it's 250 for uh, all three toys and then uh one other thing it's not toys but it is from a goodwill it was 299 for this whole bag so these are actually magnetic pens called magnet tips and it's a whole bunch of them. They're all different colors. Um, and I looked these up. I, it doesn't look like they sell these anymore, but when they did, they were fairly expensive. So I thought they were kind of cool. Might be fun for, you know, do some drawing or whatever. And just a couple bucks. Okay, next up. Um, some other toys and things here. Oh, let me grab this one. So I don't really collect the uh, Mario Kart Hot Wheels. Um, just, you know, if I find them in toy bags for like a couple bucks, I'll pick them up. But I thought this was kind of neat just as a display piece. So this is obviously from one of the track sets. But it's this really cool kind of like stone or rock Bowser where when you wind this up... Um, his arms go up and down. So, like, as the cars are coming through, you know, he'll knock them out of the way, and then there's the loop-de-loop. -loop. But I figure I'll probably just pop these tracks off. Uh, maybe leave the loops on there and just kind of use it as, like, a, like I said, a cool display piece or something. Um, then I also found, uh, going back to Ninja Turtles for a moment, I found a giant-sized Donatello. Uh, of course, this is the modern one, not, like, the actual original 1989 figure. But um, I had these as a kid, I loved them, and it was only $6.99, which I think when these were new, I think this is from like 20, okay, just last year, 2022, but I'm pretty sure they were like, I say at least like 25 bucks, so seven bucks, not, not too bad. And then, um, not exactly a toy, but I came across this, uh, it was tagged $1.99, and it was all, like, taped up when I bought it, but I, I took the tape off to open it up. It is a Pokemon trading card game Charizard playmat. So uh, I don't actually play the Pokemon trading card game, but my fiancé and I are big into Disney Lorcana now. And um, ironically enough, I just got a Lorcana playmat, like, two days before I found this. But it's always nice to have a backup, and it was super cheap. So... That was a cool find for two bucks. Then, um, um, actually, on um, speaking of Pokemon, I found this recently. It is a set of peel and stick wall decals, and this whole big container is all unused, and it was just $1.99. Um, it's got some, it's mostly Pikachu, it's just various size Pikachu, a couple Pokeballs, but two bucks. Pretty cool. Then, let's see, a few more kind of toy-type things here. At a oops, Sparrow's Nest store, I found this Futurama Planet Express ship. Um, this was a Loot Crate exclusive from uh, a few years ago, I believe. Yeah, 2016, it looks like. It was five bucks, not too bad. Then I found an old Ninja Turtles picture book that I recall from my childhood, uh, called a fishy adventure this was just 50 cents it's a little rough but for 50 cents who cares the inside looks good and it's got um one of my childhood favorite characters ray filet and then finally at that store i found a copy of microsoft pinball arcade the big box sealed for whopping 450 so this one, I don't know. I'm a little on the fence. I, I'm, I'm thinking this is probably worth something. <laughs> but I have kind of gotten back into PC big box collecting a little bit. So And I, I do love pinball, so I'll probably hang on to this one. But still, 450 is insane. Then uh, oh, one more cool little toy I found recently. This is a UFO cow abduction set. Um, now this is, it's like one of those little gift 
set things you'll see at like a barnes and noble for example they'll usually have by the checkout lanes it's all like there'll be like little harry potter themed ones or you know all kinds of pop culture things but this is kind of neat it's um so there's like a little grassy hill and then a little cow figurine of course and then a ufo with a magnet in the base so when you hover right over the cow it picks it up and it plays like sound effects and lights up and I thought it was kind of neat. It looks like it was originally twelve ninety five, which I would never pay that much. But it was tagged two forty nine, and pink tags are half off, so a buck twenty five, done. Next, uh, let's see a couple other cool things. Oh, let me do this stack here. So I went back to the local treasure hunt store which is one of those bin stores where everything is just completely randomly stocked. You have to dig through to find anything, and then everything is just a flat price depending what day of the week you go. I actually hadn't been there in close to like three months, <laughs> but I was in the area and I, I stopped in on the $2 day and I found a couple cool things. So first of all, I got a insanely long USB bc cable i think this is seriously like 20 feet long and it was just two bucks i got a giant bag of like spiders and bats and lizards i figured would be really fun for like future halloween decorations or you know, maybe like gift bags for kids or something like that I found this I thought was really cool. It's unfortunately missing, like, I think two pieces, but it is a stained glass spirited away jigsaw puzzle. So the pieces themselves are actually translucent, so you can, like, assemble the puzzle and put it in a window and the light will shine through. Um, again, I it's supposed to have 208 pieces. I counted 206. <laughs> So we didn't try putting it together yet. I'm hoping it might just be like an edge piece or something. But for two bucks, it was worth a gamble. Um, also, I was shocked to find this. The Mega Man Anniversary Collection for PS2. Complete. And the disc, if I could pop it out here, is like flawless. Two dollars. <laughs> I know it's not worth much anymore with all the new, you know reprints and collections but how, how often do you find a ps2 game a decent one in perfect condition like i'm not gonna pass that up uh then i got a book that i recall reading when i was very very young it is a uh it's called the dark 30 southern tales of the supernatural so it's a collection of original stories rooted in african-american history and the oral storytelling tradition so I'm pretty sure this is from, I want to say like the 80, okay, 1992. So I read this when I was probably in grade school, junior high, somewhere, somewhere right around there. But very, very cool book, very cool stories. And then finally, um, yeah. <laughs> so I was rooting around through the clothing. Uh, actually, they're not, I'm not going to show them here, but I got a bunch of t-shirts for my fiance, some cool like Disney stuff and whatnot. But while I was looking at the clothes... I came across a Spider-Man costume in my size, 2XL. <laughs> I haven't tried it on yet. I'm sure it's a little tight. I'm a little a little stockier than Spider-Man, to, to put it light, nicely. But um, I thought it might be fun for Halloween or something. And speaking of Halloween, I got a very cool decoration that we had when I was a child. Uh, we had this exact pumpkin light, and it was just 99 cents. Um, unfortunately I don't have batteries in it right now, but it does work. The eyes light up and you can set it so they're either solid or blinking. And I think it makes noise too. I don't recall. Uh, but yeah, I was, you know, walking through the store. I'm like, oh, I remember that. <laughs> so it's always fun to, you know, kind of relive stuff through thrifting. And, uh, one other holiday thing that I have on hand here, I found surprisingly a mickey mouse 2023 hallmark ornament for two bucks and this is like a brand new ornament ornament for this year and I, you know i open it up it's in perfect condition no chips or nothing is broken so i i don't know what it was doing there but i think it retails for around like 18 or 20 bucks and i mean we like mickey mouse so <laughs> why not 
Then, uh, moving on. Oh, here, let me show you these. So, if anybody else grew up in, like, the 80s, 90s, these might be very nostalgic for you. Uh, if not, let me explain. So, these are called the Illustrated Wildlife Treasury. And the way this worked is it was a, kind of like a mail order program where when you initially sign up, they send you this cool case. And then each month, they would send you a pack of cards featuring various animals. And I'm pretty sure the packs were random because I, I want to say occasionally you'd get like a double. But um, it's just, it was just really fun. You know, it's like obviously with the internet, like what's the point now? But it's just kind of cool to see, you know, like you learn about all these different animals and have like all these different facts. And they'd have like different symbols for, you know, how if you want to sort them alphabetically or if you want to sort them... Um, by like their territory or if they're like mammals or reptiles but there were even like dinosaurs or you know ancient um or prehistoric not ancient <laughs> prehistoric creatures so uh i was really you know excited to find these and what's kind of crazy is they were orange tagged at 4.99 but orange tags were half off and at first, I found this one, I think, by, like, some of the craft supplies. So I grabbed, I popped that in my cart, and then as I was walking towards the front, I found a second one by the sport sporting goods <laughs> of all places. And uh, I got both because one of them had the first half of the alphabet, and the other had the second half. So I still have to go through and, like, sort and alphabetize them because there's definitely some doubles, but um, I figure, you know, I'm hoping I can put together a complete set. We shall see. Next up, uh, I got some pretty cool board games this month, or tabletop games. So, um, just going down in order here. First of all, I have a card game here by IDW Games that is literally just called The Game. And it was just $1.99, but uh, I think I got either 20 or 25% off on top of that. And it's, it's just kind of like a almost ominous sounding card game here. It says, the game is no toy. You and your friends will have to work together if you're going to survive. Ooh. <laughs> but I looked it up. It had really good reviews, and it seemed to be even worth a little money, so I figured, you know, check it out. If we don't like it, I'm not going to lose money on it. But it is complete, so that was cool. Then, um, going along with... I think I showed in one of the little toy bags. I had the mini toy of Exploding Kittens. I found some of the uh, expansion or other versions of the game. So I got Zombie Kittens. <laughs> and this was also just $1.99, plus whatever discount I had that day. And this was, again, 100% complete in great shape. Um, I don't know if it's coming through on the video there, but it has a kind of cool, like, metallic finish on the box. I thought it was pretty neat. Then at, uh, I think it was at Savers, yeah... I found uh, one of the expansions called Barking Kittens, and this one was sealed for $2.49, uh, plus 20% off of that. So, that was an absolute no-brainer. Then at a Goodwill, I think it was the one where I found uh, that card game, The Game, found uh, a couple games, board, uh, board games. So this one is called Forbidden Desert, Thirst for Survival. And that was just $1.99. Now, this one, it you know, I wasn't familiar with this, but I looked up some reviews, and it was, you know, very, very highly rated, and it looks kind of fun. So you basically have these, like, um, landscape tiles, and you have to build this kind of, like, flying machine and some sort of survival story. I don't know. It looked like a good time. And then this one, I don't know how to pronounce this, but I know this is a really famous one. It's uh, Car Carcassonne? Carcassonne. <laughs> Sorry if I'm butchering that. But again, this one is just $1.99, and it's 100% complete, and it has a little expansion uh, within the box. I don't know if they all do, but this this version did. And, you know, I, I've definitely heard of this one, never played it, but I hear it's really good. So, for two bucks, not going to pass that up. And finally, something I personally was really excited about, Jurassic Park 3. Island survival game. So this one, believe it or not, 
was also one ninety nine. Uh, this is crazy. I it had absolutely everything in there. It has this enormous game board. It says it's thirty eight inches long, so over three feet long, and it has a bunch of really cool little dinosaur figurines. So I thought even if the game sucks, you know, for two bucks, get the little dino figures. <laughs> And then, um, let's see, next up, um, let me do these really quick. I got a couple hats, which I rarely do because I have a giant melon head and stuff rarely fits me. <laughs> uh, sadly, including this, <laughs> I just thought this was cool. It's a, uh, of course, Nightmare Before Christmas, Jack Skellington, Santa cap. And uh, I'm going to pop the tag off. I think it was just $1.99. But uh, it's sadly a little too tight for my head, so I thought it just might make a nice decoration. And then I uh, picked up a pair of Pokemon hats. So this one uh, was $1.99, but it's a really cool kind of all-over print. So um, we've got, you know, like the a lot of the Gen 1 Pokemon. So I see like a Bulbasaur, Blastoise, Pikachu, Eevee. Uh, there's a Meowth, Dragonite, and then uh, there's a handful of newer ones, too. Like, uh, we got, like, a Turtwig. I don't know. <laughs> oh, a little Psyduck peeking out in the back. But anyway, it is, like, an official hat. And just two bucks. Thought that would be cool. Even, you know, if it doesn't fit me just as a display. And then this one, uh, it was a little pricier. It was $4.99, but as far as I could tell, it's new. It's still got, like, the tag on the bill. It's just, like, a cool blue hat with a Pokeball. And, um, what brand was this? I think I looked it up. Oh, right here, BioWorld. So it is, like, a legit thing, not some bootleg. But, yeah, very cool. And then, uh, moving on, I got a bunch of plush this month. I, I'm trying not to, but I keep finding cool ones, so <laughs> it's hard to resist. Uh, first of all, some stuff in my wheelhouse. I got a Fire Luigi plush. He's pretty tall, a little over a foot, 99 cents. Then even bigger, I got this giant Yoshi. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is one of the pillow plush that they sell at Target, and I may have gotten one of these a few months ago, I don't remember. But for 99 cents, I am not passing this up. Then, um, speaking of kind of like pillow plush, I found this really cute, giant, sleeping Mickey Mouse plush. Uh, he was a little more expensive, he was $4.99, but I saw, just, uh, just recently, I saw this exact plush at Target for $30, so... Four ninety nine was a steal. And then uh, a couple other things. This one, <laughs> this is gonna sound stupid. So it's just this random dog. It was two ninety nine, but white tags were half off, so buck fifty. And it's actually just like from branded for a ran uh, a local bank in, in here in Illinois. But the reason I bought it is just looking at it. I see the duck hunt dog. Maybe I'm crazy, I you know, maybe it was a stupid thing to buy, but I figured just pop it with some of my Nintendo plush, it'll look cool. <laughs> then I uh, got a couple others. Oh, here, just uh, this little guy. Got one of the Kia hamster little plushies. Um, I do drive a Kia, so figured I'd put this, like, I think it's supposed to attach to your uh, seatbelt, actually. It's got, like, a little Velcro strap on the back. I don't know, just thought it was cute. And I remember those ads where they have, like, the big dancing hamsters and whatnot. Then we've got a couple of holiday plushies. So first of all, we have Hermie, the elf, from, um, I believe it was Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. He was one of the misfits, or the misfit to or they went to the Isle of Misfit Toys. Uh, he wanted to be a dentist. <laughs> but yeah, so instantly recognized him. And then got a couple of these, like, Windbreaker-style plushies. So I got a really big Santa Claus. I think this one was, yeah, from 1990. Says so it's by Prestige Toy Corporation. He was uh, a little pricier, $2.99, but he's big. He's really cute. And then this one, I think is also suppo supposed to be a Santa Claus, but um, it was $1.99. But what he reminded me of is David the Gnome. Did anybody else watch that show back in the day? I think it was on Nickelodeon. 
Um, it was like a show about like gnomes and David, the main character, rode around on a fox called Swift. I don't know. It was a great show. Look it up. <laughs> but yeah, I thought he resembled David. And then uh, the last couple of thrifting things, I got some kind of random electronics. So first off, I found this massive Disney monorail set. It was 1999. Um, plus, I think I got 20% off, if I'm not mistaken, if not 25% off. Now, what's kind of cool about this is the tr uh, the monorail itself is actually electronic, so it, it goes around uh, in a loop on the tracks, and there's, like, sound effects and lights and everything. Um, in my brief testing, the sound effects and lights do work. Unfortunately, the motor doesn't seem to. I'm thinking there's probably just, like, hair caught in a gear or something, so I'll just you know, pop, pop it open and fix it. Um, and it looks like it originally included some very itty-bitty, like, Mickey and Donald figurines that could ride the monorail. Unfortunately, it is missing those, but it's otherwise complete. It has all the track pieces, all of the monorail cars, as well as all the little connector pieces. So for 20 bucks, this was kind of a no-brainer. This over here... Then, um, yeah, a few other random electronics here. Let's see. Let's start with this guy. So this, I thought, was interesting. It's a it's called a Blisslight Skylight Galaxy Projector. Uh, and that was $6.99 before my discount. And so what this does is it actually projects this kind of, like, really cool galaxy light show onto your ceiling or, or wall, I guess. Um... And we tried it out, and it's, it's freaking amazing. <laughs> so it has a few different settings. You can do either um, kind of like a combination of the stars and the nebula, or just either or. And then there's also like a rotation feature where it'll slowly rotate. And it just reminded me of, uh, if anybody remembers, I think it was, I want to say a new 3DS XL that had the kind of galaxy design on, on the outer shell. And it, it's basically that, but a light show. And it's really neat. And I looked these up. They're normally pretty expensive. So 7 bucks was a pretty good price. Um, another somewhat seemingly random thing, but very useful for me. This is a uh, Radio Shack branded 3-in, 2-out HDMI matrix splitter slash selector. Uh, it was a little more than I normally pay. It was at, at 10 bucks, but I looked it up, and this exact model is selling for 40 so, not terrible. And uh, the reason I grabbed this is I have a pair of older HD CRT televisions um, that at one point were actually used as reference televisions for a lot of different, like, review sites like CNET or Crushfield. Uh, it's a Sony XBR960, if you're familiar. But um, absolutely incredible TVs for retro gaming. But unfortunately, they only have one HDMI input. So if you want to hook up like a slightly more modern console, like a Xbox 360 or a PS3, for example, you always have to swap them out. So I have something similar to this for one TV, but now I have one for the other. <laughs> so very useful. Then um, moving on, I guess <laughs> this is pretty funny. It's a it's supposed to light up. Unfortunately, it doesn't. I figure something's probably just loose inside, so I'll try to fix it. But it's a quote bubble. <laughs> and this was $3.99 plus half off. So just two bucks. And it does have little holes so you could like hang it on a wall. Um, I just thought it was kind of fun. I think it might be like a dry erase surface so you could write on it or just, you know, you can attach like um, lettering, whatever you want to do. So thought that could be fun for like a future video. Just huh. <laughs> do something goofy. Then, um, a couple ran seemingly random things here. So, I got... This is just a little tripod for a phone, which obviously I'm using right now, but could always use another one. And what's kind of cool about this, it has, like, the bendable legs so you can attach it to stuff. Um, I figure that could be useful. And then this one... Uh, oh, that one, you know, it's just $3.99, but then this one was only $1.99, but this thing is kind of crazy. So this is a combination selfie stick and tripod. So this is like the selfie stick mode, 
But if you fold these legs down, then you can lock it so it'll sit and it extends so you can use it as like a standing, you know, little tripod. But what's also neat about this thing is over here on the front, let me fold this down really quick. It has, I don't know if it's hard to see, there's like this little button that actually slides out. Whoa, as I launch it. Sorry about that. <laughs> so you can see here, this is actually a Bluetooth remote. So you could use it to control your camera. And it does work. So I don't know why this was at Goodwill and so cheap. Just $1.99. I looked it up. These are, I think, like over 30 bucks new. Um, oh, plus there's a light at the top here. I think that'll actually work. Um, let's see. I may not have charged it. But yeah, that, that lights up so you can like illuminate yourself. But yeah, absolutely crazy. And then um, one more thing here. This... I came across at a local Goodwill for $4.99, and at first I thought it was like a cell phone cradle, because, you know, it expands, you pop the phone in, it's kind of like a grip. But then, I realized on the back, it says it's Cyclone brand power grips, and it has a model number, uh, and also has this kind of random little power cord hanging out the bottom. So I did some Googling, and it turns out this is for PSP, and... This, I, I didn't even realize these existed for PSP. I think I had one for Vita, but um, I have a bunch of PSP games that I've been wanting to play or revisit, but because I have giant hands, I get kind of cramped up, like, gripping the PSP itself. So, boom, this thing's perfect. And uh, this cord, by the way, is a little pass-through, so you pop it in the uh, PSP's um, power port, I guess, <laughs> and it has an additional one on the side here, so you can keep it, like, plugged in as you play but very cool um at first i thought five bucks was a little much for like a phone just a generic phone cradle but for a psp one like <laughs> i could use that and then uh, one more really cool electronic piece here i got i found a giant freaking boom box <laughs> and it's a sony oh my god i love sony stuff but this thing is so freaking cool um, it is a, I don't know if you can see the model number, but it's a CFS 500, uh, FM AM stereo cassette quarter. And it even came with the original power cable, so I was able to test it at the store. And, uh, they didn't have any tapes, I couldn't test that portion, unfortunately. But the radio works perfectly, and, um, just pushing the buttons, like, to, to hit play, fast forward, rewind, all of the, uh, the internals seem to be working, so knock on wood, it's going to work perfectly. But believe it or not, this was just $12.99. I looked it up, this exact boombox was on eBay that day for like, I think $150. So I was like, holy crap. Uh, but yeah, I will probably hang on to this, because this is just like an awesome retro piece, but I figure if I ever need to... I can make some money on it, so we shall see. And then one other thing that is just simply too massive to put on camera, but I will throw up some photos to show you. I found a really cool karaoke machine by, uh, it's the Singing Machine brand, and it's a freestanding unit that has a built-in 13.5-inch CRT. And so I open it up, and I start looking through, and I realize it's new. Everything in the box is untouched, and it was only 20 bucks, and I got 20% off, and I had a $5 coupon. So I got a friggin' 13.5-inch brand-new CRT with bonus karaoke features for a whopping, like, $12 after tax. All right, moving on, let me show you some stuff that I got from online orders or other stores. So, mostly Target. <laughs> uh, first of all, something that just arrived today, I got the Night Trap Collector's Edition for PlayStation 5 from Limited Run Games. So, I 
love these old, super cheesy FMV games, and I'm pretty sure I've picked up just about every version of Night Trap at this point. I, I Oddly enough, I don't have the very first version for Sega CD. Um, I do have the Sega 32X CD version, if that counts. Um, but I've gotten, like, all the collector's edition ones. Uh, collector's edition -y ones from uh, Limited Run. So, yeah, it's like to add another one. And then, um, let's see, okay, here. So, I've mentioned in previous videos that uh, my fiancé and I are big into the game Disney Lorcana, the uh, new card game. And a new set was just released on December 1st. So, we were able to get quite a bit of product at our local stores, uh, actually on November 30th. But there were a few exclusive or kind of harder to find items that we had to get directly from the Disney store online. Uh, first of all, we got the new gift set, which uh, we already opened it and removed all the cards. That's why it's all open on this side. But this is the Disney 100 Collector's Edition set. So this, this set was pretty interesting, where it came with six different exclusive foil cards that are, I believe all of them are essentially just re-releases of cards from the first set, but they're done by actual Disney artists, and they have um, kind of an, um, a print of their signatures. It might be kind of hard to see. But uh, so you get the six foil cards as well as four booster packs of the new set, which is called Rise of the Floodborne. And um, it was a cool set. All the exclusive cards are neat. And, you know, it's always good to get more booster packs, but I feel like it was a little overpriced. The uh, the gift set for the first chapter was just $29.99, and it came with two exclusive foil cards, two oversized cards, and four packs. This one was $49.99. So, yes, they're exclusive foil cards, but was it really worth the extra $20? Uh, I don't know. Still, you know, we're happy to have it. And then uh, I also, uh, I don't have the actual mat with me, but I got the Beast Playmat. Um, hopefully this comes through on video. It's a really, really cool image. So it's actually Beast as like a gargoyle with like a lightning storm going on behind him. It's an amazing, amazing piece of art. And so the, the Playmats retail for just $19.99, but it seems like every store got in like one and they sold out instantly. So they're selling for quite a bit online. So I'm really happy to get the one that I wanted for retail price. Then moving on, let's talk about Target. <laughs> so Target is probably my favorite retailer these days because they don't have these like predatory membership plans that you have to subscribe to. And they are just overly generous when it comes to deals, uh, especially around the holidays. So they, they've been doing some absolutely incredible toy deals, and I took full advantage. So first of all, um, they had quite a few action figures as low as, I mean, some of them were even like 60 or 70% off. Plus there were other deals you can stack. So they, they recently did a $10 off of 50 offer or it was $25 off a hundred. So essentially save 20% off $50 or 25% off a hundred dollars. Plus there were all the other discounts and you can include other coupons and it, it was a good time. So I got quite a bit of stuff that I wanted. So first let me start with these. I got a few Jurassic World toys. Uh, so I got one of the Hammond collection figures. This is the Metriacanthosaurus, <laughs> if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, a very cool carnivore figure. I think this was only like, I say like seven dollars, down from like twenty or twenty-five. And then I got these very cool Target exclusive sets. So these are modeled after the original nineteen ninety-three toy line that I collected when I was a kid. So these are just awesome. Just the box art alone. And uh, we have the uh, Dr. Ian Malcolm set here where he comes with a glider and a Dilophosaurus and a baby Triceratops. And then there's the Alan Grant set with a tactical claw launcher, a Gallimimus, and I believe it's meant to be a baby raptor. Yeah. So, okay, I can show you the backs. They show the actual figures. Uh, but these were released as part of the uh, Jurassic Park 30th anniversary, which was this year. 
And I think they were on sale for like $11.99, plus there was another 20% off coupon. <laughs> so very, very cheap. And then um, during that 10 off of 50 offer, they surprisingly had NECA figures included, and they were they had an additional discount on some of them. So I grabbed a couple that I've had my eye on for a while. I got the Toonie Terrors Halloween 3 3 pack. Um, now, if you watched my previous videos, you saw I got the masks because this is my absolute one of my absolute favorite Halloween movies. Definitely my favorite in the franchise. <laughs> but very, very cool figures. So it's uh, the three trick-or-treaters with the different masks. Lots of cool imagery from the film itself on the back there. And then I got Baby Sinclair from Dinosaurs. So this is an awesome figure. It comes with a ton of accessories. He's got his high chair, all kinds of different little toys. Um, I think he has, like, yeah, frying pan so he can, you know, hit Earl and say, not the mama! <laughs> uh, unfortunately, Earl, I, I wasn't able to find him at any of my local stores, and he wasn't available online, so I still got to track that one down. But very, very happy to add this one to the collection. Loved this show back in the day. Um, and then I got some very cool Marvel stuff. So, uh, first of all, I grabbed the Agatha figure from uh, WandaVision. I think she was, I want to say down to like $7, down from 20 or 25 or whatever they're charging for Marvel Legends now. Um, I just thought she was a cool figure. She got, they got the new show coming out, whatever they plan to call it now, Agatha something. <laughs> they changed the title three times, so I don't know what it is now. But um, even just as like a generic witch figure, I thought she was cool. And then I got some very, very cool Spider-Man figures. So I got um, both Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield. Um, and now, apparently, Tobey is now known as the Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man. And then, of course, Andrew was the uh, amazing Spider-Man in his films. But um, it's kind of interesting. So they released these two. And there's also a Tom Holland figure, uh, you know, from uh, No Way Home. And both Tobey and... Tom's Spider-Man, Spider-Man, <laughs> they have the No Way Home branding, but Andrew Garfield says Amazing Spider-Man 2. I'm not sure why they did that. Uh, but anyway, I absolutely loved Spider-Man No Way Home. It was like my, kind of like my dream superhero movie. I've always loved Spider-Man. He's my favorite superhero ever. And that movie, just seeing the three of them together and the classic villains, it's just oh, so good. Speaking of the villains, I also got the Green Goblin. Um, this is just an awesome, awesome figure. So it's got the new outfit from No Way Home. Uh, really cool, well done, uh, well sculpted Willem Dafoe unmasked head as well as the the, uh, the actual helmet with the hood. Uh, his glider pumpkin bombs. It is just so cool. And, yeah, I think with the coupons, I essentially was able to get these for, I think, either 20 or 25% off. And most of them just came out, like, a few months ago. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to get Tom on sale. Um, he is, I figure he should be the easiest to find because there's been so many Tom Holland figures. But um, I'll definitely pick one up eventually. And then uh, also grabbed a couple Star Wars figures. So, uh... I don't, I feel like I've mentioned before, but my favorite Star Wars movie is Return of the Jedi. So this year, of course, is the 40th anniversary. I'm also 40. <laughs> um, but yeah, got Leia in her Endor gear. This figure, I think, was down to like 750, down from like 20 or something. So really stoked to add her to the collection. And then uh, I was able to grab the very last one at my store. So it's Luke, Luke Skywalker, of course, with Rogu. Um, so this is from the the Book of Boba Fett TV series. But very, very cool figures. It's Luke essentially in his Jedi Knight, Jedi Knight outfit, which was also in Return of the Jedi. And then a very cool Grogu figure with some like kind of cool action features, or um, accessories, rather. And so this, I think, normally was like 35 or 40 bucks. It was down to $15.99. And again, got the last one at my local store. 
Then, moving on, got some very cool video game figures. So I got this Sonic the Hedgehog 3-pack. So it's Super Sonic, as well as, um, I believe they were called, like, Hyper Knuckles and Hyper Tails in uh, Sonic 3 when you connect it with Sonic and Knuckles. But uh, they're basically just kind of like the shiny versions of um, Tails and Knuckles, and then, of course, Super Sonic. But this three-pack, I think, was just like eight bucks. And normally, these four-inch figures are $10 each, so that was a no-brainer. And then I got Bowser from the Super Mario Brothers movie. So I haven't actually picked up any of the other toys from the Mario movie line. Um, they, they do look cool, but I felt the the individual figures were they're, they're normally twenty dollars each, which seemed like a little much to me. Um, but they've all been going on sale, and Bowser uh, I believe retailed for thirty, and I was able to get them for about fifty percent off, so like fifteen. And this is a really cool figure. It has kind of like a smoke or like fire breathing feature. So I figured for 15 bucks, that's a pretty good deal. Um, I'll probably pick up the other figures in the line if I could find them for like, I don't know, eight or ten bucks each. I, I think they've gone on, on sale for about that much, but I just wanted to start with Bowser. <laughs> and then I got a lot of Pokemon stuff. So this is an awesome two-pack. So it's Scyther and his evolution, Caesar. And these are, uh, they have this special kind of, like, finish. So it's, I think it's called pearlescent is the word I couldn't think of a moment ago. But, uh, Scyther has, is one of my top three favorite Pokemon ever. And I, I got the, uh, the standard figure a few months ago. And then I actually saw this two-pack at, I think it was at a Best Buy of all places. But it was, like, 30 bucks. I'm like, oh, that's cool, but that's kind of pricey. So, Target had it on sale for $12.49 plus like another like 20 or 25 percent off so it was dirt cheap and I'm very happy to add this to the collection and on a similar note I got the latest Pokemon Select figures uh, which are exclusive to Target and if you're not familiar with these these are amazing figures they're all like really big really detailed they have a lot of articulation, and they've just been releasing a lot of really cool figures over the last few years. Um, so this one, of course, is Tyranitar, um, one of my more like favorite, more recent Pokemon. And uh, so he was part of Series 5. And then I also got uh, Suicune, one of the uh, three legendary beasts from Gold and Silver, uh, also part of Series 5. And then a very cool new Mewtwo figure. So I have a few different Mewtwo's already. I, I have um, the, the standard figure from, uh, who makes these? Wicked Cool Toys, I think. Or uh, Jazzwares? Yeah, Jazzwares. Um, but it's a smaller scale, not nowhere near as much articulation. Um, and I do have the old D-Arts Japanese figure, which is really cool. But uh, surprisingly, some of these Pokemon Select figures are actually kind of nicer than the expensive Japanese ones. So, kind of crazy. Um, but yeah, yeah. so I've gotten... Uh, I didn't mention, but um, I think Tyranitar and Mewtwo I got for like 25% off. And then Suicune randomly went on sale for like 8 bucks. So, definitely jumped on that. And then uh, also got Raiko, one of the other legendary beasts. Uh, now, they haven't announced or revealed an Entei yet. I'm sure they'll do one eventually. Uh, but he is the first release from Series 6. So uh, a lot of times they'll repeat figures. So you, you can see Mewtwo. He was part of both Series 5 and 6. And then uh, they did Rayquaza a few years ago in a previous series. But I'm pretty sure this Garchomp is new. So I'll definitely be after that one. And then um, another thing that we picked up is the Pokemon Holiday Calendar. It's essentially like an Advent calendar where they got all the little doors that you open, you know, each each day of the month up until the uh, Christmas Eve. But um, this one actually came to my attention. I got it was like an email from GameStop. They had some sort of deal of the day where they had this on sale for nineteen ninety nine, and I was looking through it, and I realized. It has a Meryl! 
<laughs> Meryl is my number one favorite Pokemon for anyone new to the channel, but I absolutely freaking love Meryl, and this is the first time, to my knowledge, he's been in included in one of these, like, holiday calendars, so I had to get it. Um, unfortunately, I didn't renew my pro membership, so I didn't qualify for the deal, and I didn't want to pay for shipping, but we realized that Walmart had this exact set on sale for 22 and uh, we were able to get free shipping, so got it from them, so... Screw games up, <laughs> but thank you to Walmart, and uh, it's a very cool set. It's got a lot of other really cool figures. It's got uh, some cool holiday themed ones. So we got like a little Pichu, Charmander, um, Rowlet, who else? Pikachu. That might be it for the holiday. Oh, and then I guess maybe Jigglypuff has a little microphone <laughs> if that counts. And then one final thing that I snagged on eBay, which is absolutely awesome. I got a big Meryl figure. Um, now, unfortunately, the tail is broken. It was listed that way. You know, it was fully disclosed. It didn't, like, arrive busted or anything. But it's a clean break, so I could very, very easily just super glue it back on. So no problem. But what is so cool about this, he's actually poseable. You can move his little arms and legs. I mean, not that it does much, but this is just too cool. Um, it's definitely, like the biggest Meryl figure I've encountered, and I am just thrilled to finally have this. Because I've seen these... Th this was only released in Japan, by the way. This is the actual original um, 1999 Tomy figure. So this thing is, you know, over two decades old at this point, and it's in pretty good shape, I gotta say. So I've seen these listed before, but they're always like over a hundred dollars which as much as i love meryl i'm not paying that much and even as of the time of this post uh posting this video there's another one listed for like 320 dollars. i don't know what that guy's smoking but i was able to get this one for 20 bucks with free shipping and yeah i mean again yeah the tail's broken but it'll glue back on no no sweat so very 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 happy to finally have an awesome meryl figure to add to my collection but there we have it a ton of stuff as always <laughs> and there's probably more to come i mean it's not christmas yet so we'll see but i just wanted to say thank you to everyone who has been watching the channel this year i really appreciate it um i i kind of started this just to see how it would go just for fun and i i hope you know you're enjoying the videos as much as i enjoy making them i appreciate everyone subscribing um if you're new here you know go ahead and subscribe i've got a lot more on the way Thank you so much for watching. Happy holidays. Hope to see you again.